and welcome to How To Covert Affairs. Now, if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about because you either A, saw this and clicked it because it looked interesting, which is a lie because this is not interesting at all, or B, you accidentally clicked this and realized there is no turning back now, then this is a YouTube video for you. On the other hand, if you already know what I'm talking about because A, you saw this via the COVID affairs tag on a social media website, B, you're one of the COVID affairs writers checking out my stuff again, which does in case, hi, or C, by some miracle of God, you're a cast member of COVID affairs. Chris Gorm, if you're watching this by some off chance, you want to like leave a comment or something down below so I can die a happy one, please, then keep watching. Because who knows? You might find out something you didn't know or forgot about our dear old show. Now buckle in, cause you're in for a wild and fangirling ride. Now, the information I'm about to give you may or may not be loosely based off of the Wikipedia article of COVID affairs, because if I was to form my own definition, it'd go like this. Yeah, sexy blonde guy and hot chick do spice dumb, yeah! So I'm trusting the internet to help me. COVID Affairs is the story of a young CIA operative named Annie Walker, who is pulled from training to, unknowingly, help capture her ex-boyfriend who suddenly left her alone in Sri Lanka, Ben Mercer. On her first day at Langley, she is introduced to August Augie Anderson of Line Tech Op, and the two immediately hit it off. Her cover, since she must have one due to her position as a covert operative, is an employee in the acquisitions department at the Smithsonian. Because of her employment, she must struggle with keeping her job a secret from her sister, whom Annie lives in the guest house of, Daniel Brooks. Early on in the first season, Annie meets Mossad agent Ia Levine. Now, much later in the series, there may or may not be some feelings developed between the two. But never fear! If you're already emotionally attached to this ship, spoiler alert, your ship sinks. Now, late into the second season, our favorite blind guy meets a chick named Parker. And they could pretty well. In fact, early into the third season, he plans to propose to Parker. What's funny about this proposal, though, is that he tells Annie about the proposal. As they're playing the part of a married couple for a mission. Awkward much? It's kind of weird, though, is that you can tell Annie's troubled about him proposing to Parker. Like, maybe he's... maybe she's jealous? Parker accepts, of course. You know, after she finds out the love of her life is a frickin' CIA operative! But then, Parker starts having second thoughts about her and Augie, so then she's like, <laughs> LOL, no, I ain't doing this, and calls off the engagement. Unfortunately, for already developed walkers and shippers, Annie is in a relationship with Simon Fisher. A couple of episodes later, he dies, and Annie almost dies because of a shot to the chest caused by none other than her jerkwad boss, Lena Smith. While Annie is in the hospital, Augie realizes just how much he needs Annie. Annie begins arriving at that same conclusion due to her unconscious dream sequences featuring Augie. Advance to the end of the season, and our ship finally sails! That brings us up to the current season. Towards the end of the season 3 finale, Annie received a folder from Henry Wilcox, who's another bastard! Annie and Augie have to attempt to take down that clump nugget, all while trying to balance a blossoming relationship. On the first point in their op, they meet Teo Braga, who ends up being Arthur Campbell's son. Speaking of the Campbells, um, yeah, Joan Campbell's pregnant! Joan is kinda in a pickle, because right after she finds out she's pregnant, uh, her husband announces he cheated on her. Oh, the awkwardness! But it was fake, so don't worry. A little bit later, we find out Augie had a wife back in the day named Helen Hansen, who was supposedly dead, but is apparently alive and well. Oops. So that and a bunch of other fun stuff ends up driving a wedge of Walkerson, so they split. For one whole episode! <laughs> they end up getting back together at the end of episode 8. Right before crap really starts going down. Eventually, Annie decides to go off the grid so she can take down Henry. The only people that know she's currently still alive, since she's supposedly dead, are Augie, Eyal, 
and Calder Michaels, the recently appointed head of the DPD that our favorite couple first encountered in Medellin, Colombia. Oh, we're days away from the end of the hiatus. Days away till the end of our dark period. Days away until season four, episode 11 premieres. Until then, we're stuck mulling over quotes such as, we'll dance again, Walker, but not till the music's right. And you will never lose me by telling me the truth. Until we find more tidbits in the back six of season four. October 11th, 2013, we'll be able to assist you more in your journey through the magical, emotional, dramatic world that is code affairs. Until then, you can leave comments and questions and doobly-doo. And you can follow me on Twitter at AdNuvaPi. So you can witness my fangirling over this wonderful show and how awesome and caring the writers and cast are. They will interact with you so much. I've gotten two replies from Chris Gorham. One reply from Piper Barabo, one reply from Carrie Matchett, endless retweets and favorites and replies and the such from the Covert writers. I've gotten a favorite from Dylan Taylor. I've gotten a couple favorites and retweets from the actual Covert Affairs Twitter page. And I've also just made so many friends through this. Like, people are just awesome, especially if you share that common bond. And it's really great for people who are antisocial like me to make friends over the internet. Until next time, lovelies.